Here are five things you can start today to protect your eyes for tomorrow. Number one and two go hand in hand, and that's proper diet and exercise. It's no secret that our diets today are terrible, full of junk food, processed foods, and excess sugar, but I bet a lot of people would be a lot more careful about what they eat if they knew that their overall health had a large effect on the health of the eyes and their vision. For example, cardiovascular disease and diabetes are some of the conditions that can lead to really dire effects in the eyes, whether it comes to diabetic retinopathy that causes bleeding and scarring inside of the eye, and also swelling that can lead to pretty significant vision loss and sometimes blindness. There's also hypertensive retinopathy that can lead to bleeding within the eye and some serious changes and damage to the tissue there leading to vision loss. There are even cardiovascular vascular diseases that can cause sudden painless loss of vision that is gone in a flash and doesn't come back. It's kind of like having a stroke, but in the eye itself. Loss of blood flow means no oxygen to the tissue, means loss of vision. These are really significant things that we need to keep in mind when we're feeding our bodies. We want to nourish our bodies with whole foods, healthy foods, water versus sodas. Even making small changes, one food at a time, can lead to a healthier lifestyle. When it comes to exercise, that's helpful for every aspect of our health, and our eyes are definitely included in that. Whatever we can do to prevent these systemic conditions that can lead to eye problems is going to be major, but also it's been shown that even light exercise for 30 minutes reduces our eye pressure temporarily, which is an added bonus for anybody who may be dealing with glaucoma. Number three is practicing the 20-20-20 rule. This means that during focused work, every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break and look 20 feet away. And I like to add that you should also focus on blinking during this break. The reason for this is that during a lot of focused work, the eyes tend to get fatigued and our blink rate goes down and this causes the eyes to dry out. If you do a lot of computer work or you spend a lot of time on your phone or a lot of focused work in general, over time, this can affect your ability to produce a good tear film and that can cause the eyes to dry out further. Our eyes actually rely on regular blinking to push out the oil from our eyelids oil glands and this oil forms the outer layer of our tears that prevents them from evaporating as quickly so without these regular blinks and these little breaks, our eyes can dry out. Dry eye is a huge topic and there's a lot that can be done to manage it, uh, but one of the things that can be just really helpful is taking these short breaks. When the eyes dry out, the vision tends to fluctuate. So if you experience blurry vision towards the end of the day, that can often be one of the causes. With fatigue and reduced blinking day after day, this can lead dry eye to get worse and worse. And that leads me to the next topic. Number four is wash your eyelids. We've all accepted that we need to brush our teeth and wash our faces, but it's not exactly common knowledge that we need to cleanse our eyelids on a regular basis. Cleansing the eyelids daily with mild soap and water or an over-the-counter eyelid cleansing product can help to prevent all sorts of eyelid and eye complications, and that could include preventing styes and mite infestations, and yes, that is a real thing. They like to set up camp right there in our eyelash follicles. Cleansing the eyelids helps to keep those bad bacteria at bay so you get less of an opportunity to cause these infections and inflammation. There are other infections and inflammation that can also not just affect the eyelids, but also the cornea itself. And when the cornea becomes affected, you have to manage it quickly and carefully to make sure that it doesn't cause major damage to the cornea, including scarring that can lead to lifelong light sensitivity and even vision loss. Unhealthy eyelids also leads to poor tear film production, and this can be a major factor in dry eye, which is really an underappreciated struggle that a lot of people deal with, and it can be difficult to manage, especially if the eyelids have been becoming inflamed over the course of a long life. This can prove to be hard to control because it's hard to get the eyelids back to the way they were after they've been inflamed and damaged for so many years. Number five is wear sunglasses outside. 
The sun can contribute to or cause numerous eye conditions. UV exposure can cause photokeratitis, which is basically a sunburn on the eye. I myself have experienced this many years ago after a long day at the beach. I came home and found a rectangle of red on my eye from squinting. Chronic exposure like this to the sun leads to a lot of inflammation and you can develop a pinguecula or a pterygium. These are non-cancerous growths on the eye and a pinguecula affects the conjunctiva while a pterygium begins to cross over the cornea. These interrupt the tear film and can lead to problems like dryness and irritation and particularly if a pterygium becomes severe, it can actually cross over the pupil and begin to block vision. UV exposure also leads to faster progression of cataracts, meaning needing to have cataract surgery sooner. Macular degeneration is another big one. This causes loss of central vision over time, which is responsible for seeing detail and reading and recognizing faces. If you have macular degeneration in your family or diagnosed in yourself, wearing sunglasses is one way to help to slow the progression. Although eye and eyelid cancers aren't relatively all that common, they still can occur and the sun certainly contributes to their development. One of the more common eyelid cancers that we see is called basal cell carcinoma, which affects the lower eyelid. While these cancers can be removed, you end up missing those important oil glands, which are responsible for the tear film, which help to prevent dry eye. So it's best to avoid this altogether because it can lead to long-term complications even after it's removed. Sunglasses don't just protect the eyes, but also the tissue that surrounds them. And they also help to reduce glare and make seeing outside more comfortable. So all around a great benefit and a great choice. All in all, it's a harsh world out there and there are things we can do to protect our eyes to try to maintain healthy eyes and vision for as long as we can throughout our lifetime. So take care of yourself and you got this. Don't forget to subscribe for more eye care tips and check out this video next. Thanks so much for watching.